Welcome back, explorers, to the Lucky Die. Previously, Lafian shares his dream, Rao checks in on the Dragonborn kids, Squash asks Trempel for help, and Zoltana makes friends with a god. Before they leave Felsen, the team wrap up their various last-minute tasks. They talk of the future and casting unknown spells, whilst an overly friendly bard plays them an inspiring tune, and Demi takes them to the waste of Tisirthu in Kino. Who is Jandario? What spell would Squash ask for help to cast? And what should they expect from the vast desert in Kino? I guess we're about to find out. Welcome back to the Lucky Die. It should take you about 10 days walking across the desert. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's like, uh, if I do my rough mathematics right, if you were here, roughly here, then that's about 10 days. But we can say it's eight, it's fine. Demi, what the shit? Demi, you're <laughs> a little off. I, I don't remember who actually dropped you off. Was it Was it Grimsh? I think it might have been. Have you pissed Grimsh off? No. I think you might have. No, he waved you his name. Nice. shit to Grimsh. <laughs> we had a moment. Um, basically, you're a good like. It will take you most of a day, and you guys arrive about six a.m. Uh, ish in comparison to what should be over on um, Discord time. So it's about halfway during the day, and it would take you probably nearly most of the day to get to where that trench is that Squash can see. It's a really long distance out it's very hot it's very uncomfortable there is a lot of effing sand there's a lot of dunes and with dunes unfortunately comes difficult ish terrain because you're walking through sand anyone done that super awful (laughs) it is not the fastest trick yeah it's super bad um you would probably be something in the distance by the time you kind of get to the trench itself um, you can see how deep it is you can see how like wide it is and it's very dark now at the very bottom of this trench you can see what looks like the remains of various camps that seem to be long abandoned um, like you can see that there are old cooking fires that have been set up you can see that they're old like um, I won't say exactly tents but like shelters um, that have been kind of erected and then just left behind Um, the trench itself goes on for miles in both directions it goes so far that you can't see the end of it Um, it is kind of night-ish the end of the day by the time you actually get to the edge of the trench it is something ridiculous like 90 feet high hey V Ral how many days has it been (laughs) I'm gonna say it's like one day until you hit the trench (laughs) so you don't have to roll yet but you will in the morning um yeah, you arrive at the edge of a trench. Um, so far as you can tell, using Squash's like passive perceptions and all the good shit and even active stuff, you can't sense or see anyone sentient. Like you would see and hear creatures moving around, but you wouldn't hear, see, or sense anyone else. Hmm. The place looks pretty abandoned. I need to make my sleep roll. Nope. Oh, we haven't. You haven't slept yet. Oh, I thought you said it was going to take like eight days. Yes, but this is one day to get you to a trench. Okay. We kind of said that and then just kind of dis- disregarded and just started talking as if we were there already. So I, I thought yeah, we I'm were, talking I thought as we if you're there. at the edge of the trench. I'm not saying this is the end of your journey to the forge. I'm not going to drop you straight on there. No, no, no. Uh, all right. Squash is going to look around and see if he sees any, like, kind of, um, uh, trodden out walk paths in the sand dunes down into the 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 crack the divot uh as to not like walk um 
um, a treacherous path somewhere where the sand might give out weirdly. Sandstone. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of, yeah, like you're correct there. It's like the edges of the trench kind of are mostly sandstone. So the biggest like worry you have is like loose gravel and shit. Um, Yeah, absolutely. Take a perception roll for me, please, or a survival. All right, I'll drop a survival because I think that's more fun. That's uh, rolled with advantage. Whoopsie. It Whoopsie is doodle. still a 30. <laughs> <laughs> it's just fucking sure. Um, I rolled a 17. Yeah, you find you find a very safe pathway down. Um, it takes, I mean, for everyone else, it's probably pretty easy. Like you have to like jump a little bit because of your like shortened height. But generally you find a safest path down that doesn't require having to put like any ropes out or climb down using a climbing kit. You find a fairly safe route down. Um and you find yourself at the bottom of the trench. You're correct. There is sandstone pretty much everywhere up the sides and basically along the floor itself. You can see that there are cracks and some kind of like entrances, like caves um, that seem to go back into the stone. They don't seem to be worked by people. They just seem to be naturally forming. Um and you kind of see this all around. The trench you find yourself in is basically straight at the moment. Um, you can look very far down into the distance and still really see nothing. Um, it's just, as far as you can see, a long straight trench. Okay. You said that Groom said it was like in the trench. Yep, he said it was in the trench. In the trench, somewhere deep beneath the earth was the description. So that's why I assume earth dark, so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in either All case, right. you're kind of our survivalist, so. I'll figure it out, I guess. Um, and I think Squash is going to head start heading for one of the caves. And using his knowledge of desert caves, he's going to try to figure out if it's a deep cave or if it's just a small pocket. Uh, pretty easily from kind of walking up to it and just having a look at it, it does have a little bit of a cavern to it it is quite big the further into it you go but this is essentially a dead end um, right. this would be a very easy place to, to to defend for the evening if this is where you wanted to set up camp yeah how much daylight do we have um sun setting okay um we've been like walking in the desert and been going since like 5 a.m our time um mm-hmm. so squash is just gonna like point out like this would be a good place for us to, uh, like, rest for the night, get used to the keynote time. Um, I can do a little bit of scouting outside, uh, figure out if any of the other caves go deeper. Just, you know, uh, do some re- reconnaissance. If you think that best. Once I get a f- better feeling for where we are and, like, what we can expect, uh, I'll, I'll make a more informed decision. But right now, I think it's best not to be moving at night. We've never been in this area. I have no idea what I'm looking out for. I don't know. I've heard of creatures who meld in with the environment to such an extent that you can't tell them apart for anything else. And I've gotten good at spotting them over in in Bikron. No, not Bikron. Discora. Uh, I've gotten good at uh, spotting them over in Discora, but I have no idea what to expect out here. And I get this like sixth sense that like the gods are mocking me right now, taunting Zoltana, me. Zoltana, are you further. making fun of him? Me? I, I'm not making fun of nobody. <laughs> oh, there you go. See, you're fine. Okay. Well, you can... Oh, ha ha ha! Now you're being made fun of by the gods. <laughs> uh, uh, Tio can go with you. Hmm, that's not actually a bad idea. Tio's quite small and uh, quiet, so I guess it's Squash and Tio time. Okay. Uh, The other unlikely buddy cop movie. (laughs) Roll Tio time uh, theme song. (laughs) I want just like one and then just cut it off. (laughs) (laughs) Hate it. Um, Okay, uh, what are you looking out for danger-wise? Are you looking out for structure stuff or are you looking out for creatures? Are you looking out for both? Uh, tell me what you're looking for when you are going out scouting. Okay. I'm going to assume that it's okay, and I'm going to say this, the three of you can hide in the cave or nearby to the cave. I'm not going to attack you 
Like, okay, you can be you there much. safe. I'm not going to deal with that. So, uh, Squash's biggest concern is that he doesn't know anything about the flora or fauna of the area. He okay. is absolutely green here. Like, there could literally be eight foot tall, like, sand golems that roam these deserts, and he would not know. He's never been here before. That's pretty dope. So, mm-hmm. uh, so Squash's, like, main fear is the unknown element of the life around here. Okay. His assumption is, because he spent a bit of time in the desert of Dreneth, is that uh, the desert is relatively similar to that one of uh, Discora. So yes. it's a lot. Okay. L- he's a lot less afraid of being caught out by a sand pit or something like that, because he's assuming like a sand pit in Discora is a sand pit in Bikron. Mm-hmm. But the uh, but the the purple worms of Discord. Uh, <laughs> Discora are uh, probably maybe a little bit different than the purple worms off. No, if you get eaten by a sand pit in Kino, you come out of a sand pit in Discora. <laughs> if you get you eaten by a purple through. worm in Kino, you get a shout out in Discora. Yeah. <laughs> Graf has found his excuse. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, in that case, can I have you roll a survival check, please? Yes. And this I will time give I'm, you some information about the world. And this time I'm not gonna advantage it accidentally. All right, that's a twenty-three, a purpose. which is the lowest I could a roll. Twenty-three, of course, of course. Yeah, I've got expertise in survival. Um, Damn, I kind of ruined my flat discora theory, huh? <laughs> <laughs> As you look around, you recognize some of the familiar sand animals that you would have come across when in, on your in your time um, when you were in um, the desert of Dranath. There were very similar creatures. It would be very easy to hunt down some of the same creatures if you were looking for more rations, which y'all might need to actually start paying attention to. Um, finding water, however, you look for it and you try and find sources of it that are running, but it's actually very difficult. You are here in a trench. You think you'd need to probably get much, much further down into the earth um, or perhaps venture out of the trench to find water. Right now, there is nothing in sight. There is nothing for you to tap. Things like golems that you were looking for, you don't see any evidence of it, uh, but that doesn't mean they're not here. Um, you also don't find any remains of like the giant purple worms like when they shed you don't find any evidence that any of their like shells or anything are left behind you do find shells of some other creatures that shed Um, you actually find like very far from the distance as the sun is like properly beginning to set and Tio just kind of like sits on your shoulder and you know nudges you in a direction you see that there is kind of the remains the shell of a very big eight-legged creature but that's just what it shed, which is about five, six feet tall. Uh, you assume whatever comes out of it is going to be much bigger. You also notice signs of things that have sentience, tool working. You find as you kind of go further a bit long, you find evidence of creatures that were set up camps that build themselves shelters. You find the remains of food. You find like you're not entirely sure what's left on that cooking spit, but it doesn't look right. Ugh. Gross. Yeah, sorry. All right. Thanks, Ivaris. Um, Yeah. If you kind of find that. There are things that you would expect and things that you do not expect. Um, all, right. all you really know is that water is kind of tough to find where you are right now. Uh, not what Squash thinks, but what I heard loudly was uh, sand crabs that use tools. That's that's all I'm visioning right now, and it's scary as shit. Um, uh, Neil, insert crab right here, please. <laughs> uh, we're gonna change the artwork to that that crab thing that does the dance, or yep. uh, whatever that fucking meme was for ages. Yeah, that's just gonna be the artwork for this episode. Yep. I don't even remember the song anymore. I don't need to. <laughs> Copyright guards. Uh, uh, replace that with Tio Turn, please. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, this is kind of just what you, you come across and what you see. Right. Um, so you have some information. Um, yeah. Looking at the caves and such like, uh, they all appear to be fairly similar to the one that you have or the one that you found, which is it goes in a way... And then it kind of stops. Um, much further ahead, uh, probably right close to where that kind of spider carapace-looking motherfucker is, you can see that there are more tunnel works there, but 
it's probably a bit too far for you to range this late at night on your own yeah. when it's the first scout. Yeah. Yeah, Scross is just gonna get back to camp rather than risk anything. Again, new environment. Yeah, yeah. He's just not gonna get caught out. That's fair. Um, yeah, you make it back fairly easily. Uh, yeah, he basically just updates the guys on it. It's just like, um, yeah, um, it's been a while since anything sentient was around here, but it's this area has been worked. So the way they were doing something here, there's also some kind of a giant, uh, the giant, tall, big for you guys. It's not as big, but for me, it's giant, uh, some kind of <laughs> eight legged thing. Uh, that like sheds carapaces out there. So I don't want to be out there during night alone. Um, so I'm just going to get back in here, just sleep on the other side of you guys. No, that's fair. Yeah. Um, okay. That that sounds fun. Uh... And I couldn't find any tunnel that actually goes into the earth dark. So it'll probably be closer to our destination then. Mm-hmm. So I think we just need to follow the trench tomorrow morning. And luckily we be in a trench. So partially a part, part of our trip will be, we'll be in shade. So it's not going to be the worst. Okay. We have to follow the dirty white brick road. <laughs> Tia can watch out. Slightly off white. <laughs> watch out for bears. I don't think there's g- Yes, Tia, keep an this eye This is not bear country. <laughs> eight legged <laughs> spider bears. Who knows? Man bear pig. Okay. Um, Spider crab uh, bear. Y'all go to sleep. Zoltana. Great, you'll fall asleep. Fantastic. <laughs> I'm Zoltana. Zoltana, uh, I, just to be on the safe side. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't suppose any of your god magic is capable of uh, conjuring up food and water, can you? Um, I, I don't think so. <laughs> you, you can. You, you can. You just I can. To... That's right, prepare, little voice in my head. I can do it. It's a, it's a third level spell. It's a third level spell. I know how to do that. What's the third level spell? <laughs> <laughs> do I have that prepared? I don't think so. It is up to you. You can have, do in the morning. Yeah, you'd have to prepare it for the following day. All right, well, I will prepare yeah. it for the following day. Okay. Also, I didn't realize you you don't age anymore. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, we hit 15. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Casey has a, th- has a thing. You have a thing. What? You just don't get old anymore. Yeah. You're not get- going to age. Oh, wait, do- Although, to be fair, how much more can you age in 45 days? 45 days, V. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, V. You answered your own question in the question, man. <laughs> also, that sword. You know, that, that sword. Yeah, yeah. That sword, which someone in Bellum totally still has. Um, yeah, no, cool. Emma has it. Cool. Somewhere. Does she? Does she? Yes. Does she? Does she? Please? Does, Does she, she really? Does she? I hope so. Does she? Does she? It's cool or sword. did she realize I'm a rogue and I don't want a fucking sword? <laughs> wow. She, it was a brief little bit of experimentation that we got a glimpse into then because she had the sword at one point. <laughs> she did. She did have it at one point. I think I think I mentioned it even in the episode when it went sailing through the air that you saw a flash of gold. I think I mentioned that she got it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Woo. anyway. I see that's in the... So Zoltana is preparing food and water for the next day. Um, I also see that Squash, you have activated alarm. Yes. People were talking. I didn't want to distract. Is that going to be a loud alarm or is it going to be a mental alarm? Mental alarm. Uh, if it's just some fucking lizard thing, then I don't need to wake everybody up. Okay. <laughs> if it's just a gecko that walks in, you're just yeah. like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> but if it's a sand crab with tools. <laughs> yeah, if it's, a, if it's a sand crab, like, oh boy, I sure howdy. I, I love chiseling. <laughs> if it's a, 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 was it a camouflaging sand crab with tools, you're Late out. food camouflaging <laughs> sand crab with tools, that's a goal. <laughs> yeah. That's that's also what I call them. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, are you going to set a watch? Yeah. Yeah, we should. Well, uh, mm. I can't set the alarm to wake us up, like to make a noise, and then nobody really does need to take a. Uh, uh, you can get a good rest. Yeah. Get alarm up. That's fair. I mean, I only need to sleep. Well, meditate for four hours anyway, so I'll be up for yeah. part of it. 
Rawls gonna look and see what Ava put in his pocket. You find a tiny square piece of wood. And you can see that on it, uh, she has burned a delicate pattern of a boat and you reaching over the side of the boat and pulling her out of the water. Oh, Can you motherfucker stop being so cute? <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it would be cute. <laughs> like you make things for everyone and no one makes anything for you. So I thought Eamon would make something Aww. for you. So and then you open the wood Aww. and it's a bento box. <laughs> Yeah, it, has, it just has like antacids in it. No, it's just a piece of wood. That's a shitty bento box. <laughs> <laughs> it's just full of tums. Um, yeah, she just wanted to give you something to let Aww. you know that she loves you. Um, That's she's adorable. She's been working on it for a bit. Uh, okay. Um, I have a question. Alarm has been set. Yes. It's the whole yes. woodworking thing. Is that like a thing in Demarius or is that something Raul picked up because I think, I think it's a row thing Amy's never done this okay Amy's like I will buy you a hoodie and you'll be happy with it <laughs> because I just realized that this is an ador- like an incredibly adorable like cultural thing if it was like each one uses their breath <laughs> weapon to uh, or like their breath to carve in different ways different material sorry uh, I just got interested in the cultural thing uh, Raul did uh, this Sometimes just kind of when he was idling out in the woods, when he went into the woods in Demarius that were really scary and he wasn't supposed to go out into. Yep. Um, Putting it okay, and yeah. He would pass out and there would be acid and he would just kind of fiddle in it and uh, uh, started just doing it to pass time. Okay. So it's a raw thing. Okay. Kind of oh. just a pass time. Yeah. Thing. It's very much a raw thing. Um, he drools on. And Arch. <laughs> Wood Your Tesla lot. coil comment, uh, is it the theremin? Like, that's my idea no, no, of what no. that good lightning one would be. Ther- uh, theremins are like the, you just put your hand in front of it and like you move it around and it does yeah. things. Tesla coils are like legit, like metal fucking balls on top of a pole and like bol- like jolts of electricity come out and like you can make music with it. I'll send so, you a video. Yeah. That's uh, gross. I love it. Using the different right. frequencies, they can make different sounds. Okay, so uh, alarm has been set. Y'all are going to do a watch anyway? I think it's basically going to be everybody's asleep for four hours and then we have Laffy and mostly awake after that. Okay, we're that's gonna, totally fine um, because gonna... absolutely dick all happens in the night. Um, so y'all pass a relatively comfortable night. Um, is anyone... Uh, Zoltana, you don't hear any prayers, but you kind of do get that feeling that someone is responding on your behalf. Um, you kind of get that feeling that as you are beginning to drift off, you can kind of begin to hear Dammers just like responding to people and trying to give them advice. Uh, he doesn't feel like he needs your input right now. And I would like you to please roll 2d20. 26. Um, between Dammers and between Elise's new heraldic state, you have gained 27 new followers. Woo! Uh, you have the feeling, you don't really know why, but new voices are talking about Elise singing these epic songs um, and singing your praises everywhere. Um, Elise is doing some real work, yo. <laughs> you have friends that love and adore you. Um, okay. Morning comes. And y'all continue making your way. Whomever is in the lead, can I please have you roll either a perception, investigation, whatever you think you could argue to spot incoming threats that I may or may not be throwing at you today. Oh, um, before we do, Raoul, I need you to roll a d6, please. Oh, yes. Is it a d4? No, Neil. <laughs> Again, it's a d6. <laughs> okay. You're still on sixes. You do this every time. <laughs> I thought we burned through sixes very quickly. Nope. Two. Uh, you're fine. <sighs> you're fine. <laughs> you have 17 days left on a D6. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Rao wakes up fine. Uh, I really don't want squash in the front, but I want the highest chance of good rolls. And I know that Laffian does not want to be in front. Laffian wants squash in front. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you can stand my on my shoulders. No, no. 
where <laughs> I don't think that would help really. <laughs> I think, yeah, no. <laughs> we, could tie, we could tie a rope around you in case you do get swallowed by a worm. All right. That is a survival roll of 23. I'm okay with that. 23. I'm ready to get swallowed by a worm. That sounds fun. <laughs> On a 23. All right. Let's see how well it does. All right. On a 23, up ahead of you, um, this is probably about a good three quarters of a day ahead. You've been essentially walking through this trench, hiding in the shadows to keep the heat down. Um, it's that kind of heat that is so dry. Like you can taste the, the kind of like dust in the air, even though there's no breeze. It's just awful. Um, and as you begin to make your way, probably about three quarters of the day through, you've passed all the kind of spider carapaces that have been left behind there's more and no. more of them as you kind of pass this area and you can see bits of them broken you can see kind of like webs and holes in the ground where their kind of like sneaky traps are and as you pass them you begin to study them and you notice them more and more and thanks to having passed a fair few of them up ahead where it looks like there's much less in the way of like spider remains you see there's like a nice clear patch but you also notice that there is disturbances in the grounds where you probably assume that might be an ambush. Yeah. Squash just puts out what his hand. What do y'all want to do? And he oh, like points no. it out. Uh, and oh, I no. don't believe Squash has sending or anything like that. Uh, uh, Squash does have sending. He doesn't have message. <laughs> sending is a level three spell, I believe. Yeah. I, <laughs> I not... don't know if you have ambush message. Ambush him right back. Uh, no, I... Uh, yeah, Squash is just going to point it out and just like very quietly just go like um, if my intuition is correct I think the spider-like things we've been seeing um, I think they burrow into the ground and then they ambush people as they walk past and if you look right over there and Squash is going to point out one of the disturbances yep yeah, there's like probably three or four of them. I'm pretty sure that's one of them. Now, I could be wrong, but I think I'm right. <laughs> Should I spit acid in it? Let me just get behind Sultana before we do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if it's easier, I could always just teleport us past this area. I oh, yeah. That's a good idea. Hmm. Sultan, your whispers are too whispery. I can't hear I you. I think that's a good idea. Okay. Worst yeah. case scenario, Squash, I know you have Fireball. Just do that if that if we fuck up. Uh, yeah. Uh, Squash kind of sheepishly goes like, yeah, yeah, I, I have that now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you woke up. You woke up my girlfriend with that. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Laughing is going to teleport us across, I guess. Uh, okay. He's not going to go like super, um, super far. He wants to go like probably maybe like 100 feet past where all this shit is. Yeah, that would be pretty easy to do. Um, if you are not basically using all of your side points instantly in the morning, like, hey, let's skip eight miles of shit. Um, if you aren't doing that, then, um, or you save at least some side points in, in reserve, then we can basically say if you come across these areas, so long as Squash spots them, then we can just move past them. That's not a problem. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to see what y'all do, if I could attack you with spiders or not. Um, uh, how many side points should I uh, account for missing out on? Uh, how many do you have? So, that's a complicated question, V. Okay. Um, the short answer. How much do you have without doing blood? Oh, well, that's still a complicated question. Um, if I'm just doing Phantom Caravan, that requires six. I have my base side pool is 64. Okay. Um, just do 12. It's fine. Uh, just assume like 12 is what you would be spending getting past traps and shit, um, like on an average daily basis. So I'd be teleporting uh, twice. Yes. Yeah, let's do that. Like, on an average daily basis, you're going to be teleporting twice. So when we get to the forge, just have 12 down. Like, I'm fine with that being a thing. Okay. 
Yeah, because I also some days have... will be more, some days will be less. But if this is going to be our tried and true method for getting around the shit that squash can spot, which is basically let's not be wrong, fucking everything, um, <laughs> we can allow you guys to jump forward a few days. That works. All right, um, Casey, that's the person. What I am? Yeah, could you roll a d four, no. please? Refuse. Absolutely <laughs> uh, could you roll two d two then? <laughs> I'll roll 4d1. That's the same result. And that's that's final. <laughs> okay, go for it. Go ahead, please. <laughs> All right. I'm um, sorry that I'm being such a little expecting. shit. I don't know what's wrong with me. I rolled a 4d1. I rolled 4 I actually rolled 4d1 and I got a 4. I just need everyone to know that I managed okay. to get four ones. That that's one. how math <laughs> Guys, That's amazing. Ca- Casey, there was never anything else that could <laughs> oh, happen. Oh, duh! <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to, like, actually... I'll roll actual d4, because that's not fair. <laughs> roll 2d4. Uh, sorry, roll 2d2, please. <laughs> this has to be just roll the d4. <laughs> 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 roll the d4. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with we're giggly today. We are, we are <laughs> monsters today. We are all in a very silly place. I love it. Like this fucking, I, I love this move so much. Um, okay. It takes you three days before anything significant really happens. Anything that you can't just teleport past or beyond. Some days it is just teleport after teleport after teleport. One of the days is literally nothing. But it takes you three days to get to a good spot. Ral, I require you to please roll oh, no. a bunch of D6s. Oh. Yay. Can I roll? So I need to move forward the day counter three. Can I roll six, oh, shit. 60 ones? No. <laughs> no, Neil. Stop it. No, Neil. Oh, my God. Okay. You guys are technically on a day 101. Ooh. That's Dalmatians bad. rain from the sky. Neil, I do need those D6s, please. Three. <laughs> three of them. A three. Yep, that's fine. Uh, Four. That's fine. Five. And that's fine. <laughs> three. All right. Three. Sorry. Four, five, and three. Uh, You get to live for three more days at D6, my friend. Oh, joy. A gift. Yes. You have 14 days left at D6. Oh, boy, my favorite. (sighs) Oh, boy, my favorite. About fairly early in the morning, um, Squash may or may not be scouting slightly ahead, but based on your passives, I hate your passive, um, you notice that up ahead there appears to be a fairly large camp. You can see off in the distance, and as you creep forward a little bit further, you can see that... There are a lot of campfires around. There are a lot of shelters that have been built. There are kind of barricades that have been built across, like, the entire width of the canyon itself. As you can see that kind of far off and to the right-hand side, there is this kind of, like, fairly large rock that has been kind of set in place. You can see that there are caves either side of this large area of that has clearly been inhabited by a lot of people. There is a lot of camp debris left behind. There is a lot of evidence that there was a large amount of creatures here, sentient beings, fairly recently. But you don't spot anyone from this distance. Uh, you are down 12 side points. So I'm understanding you correctly. There's a massive barricade that cuts off the entire trench. And behind yep. the barricade, there's a giant rock that is inlaid into the side of the sand. Or it, does it look like it's on top of it? Um, there is like a very large rock that is kind of against one of the walls of the canyon. Mm-hmm. And it's like pretty large, pretty big uh, from your distance. It looks like it's touching, but you are quite far away. So maybe there may be a way to scoot around it. Um, but there is evidence of a lot of people having been here recently or maybe still here um, kind of behind the barricade the barricade is maybe three or four feet high so you can't see much over it but you can see like in the gaps in whatever it is you can see there's evidence of a camp here all right uh, or a former camp yeah squash is just going to report back to the team uh 
just catch up with him. Like, hey, um, I think we're either here or we're at a checkpoint. Uh, there's clearly like uh, um, people made things upcoming, like uh, barricades and stuff. Do we talk or do we punch? So I couldn't see anybody there, um, which probably means there's not a lot of them if they are there at all. Or uh, maybe they are extremely talented hiders. I could go look. Why don't you send um, send Tio up above the trench yeah. and get an aerial view? Yeah. Roll. Bounces into T.O. T.O. Okay. time. And so, from what I'm understanding, we're about to T.O. time to look over the extent of the camp itself. Yes, aerial view. Okay. Um, can you please roll a perception check as T.O.? Yes. Damn it, with me and the nines. I rolled a nine again. Okay. Does perception is T.O. have bardic <laughs> Does Tio have bardic inspiration? You used your bardic inspiration. Did Tio on use trying Tio's to bardic woo inspiration? <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Fine. Go ahead. I don't give a shit, sure. I'm joking me. You don't have to. Do it. Do <sighs> it. Do it. <laughs> Five. Fourteen. A fourteen. On a fourteen, um, Tio basically takes to the sky, and as Tio looks across the camp, you can see that a lot of creatures have been here. A lot of sentience has been here. But the cooking fires are all cold now. You can see that there was no real organisation to this other than a bunch of creatures have been here. They have set up camp and now it is empty. The other side of the camp itself has very similar low barricades to it. Almost identical, almost identical to what you're looking at from here. You can see that there is a very large entrance into what looks like the Earth Dark. It's, as you would expect, fairly dark. It's a very wide passage, and it has clearly been travelled a lot. Where do you want to send Tio now? Um, hmm. I'm going to bring Tio back. Okay. Yeah. Um... I want to make sure that there's no one like on top of the canyons looking down. Okay. Um, but that's about okay. that's about it. I just want to make sure okay, that great. our tops are covered too. As you um, circle upwards with Tio, just to check that nobody is up on the sides, you in fact spot that on the same side that the big rock is up against, you can actually spot that there is a very small camp there. There is maybe two, maybe three people that are clearly communicating and existing up there. It's kind of up and out of the way. Okay. Uh, Teal comes back and Raw relays that. There are... There's no one really there. All their fighters are cold. But they had left at the it looks like they went further in, you said, with the... Uh, it looks like there is like a kind of big entryway into the okay. side of the canyon itself. Um, yeah. Like basically a big cave, but you didn't advance too much further into it. And you can tell that that route has been travelled a lot. Yeah. Uh, but there's also some f further inside. Some uh, I d didn't go in. There's an no inside... Problem. Um, uh, also, there's a small camp up on top of the canyon. And are there people there? Yes, a couple. Uh, people like us people or people like Kino people? Uh, I can go look. Tio gets closer. <laughs> Um, so there are three people up here. You can spot a tabaxi, a drow, and a second tabaxi. Wait, am I right? Yes, a tabaxi, a tabaxi, and a drow. 
Is the drow surprisingly buff? She may be surprisingly buff. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay. Uh. That's mostly Kino, so I'm assuming they're not going to be happy to see us. If I understand correctly, Queen Rowena hasn't exactly marched on Kino yet, so they probably don't know that we're here yet. But at the same time, if if Discora marches on Kino, I don't think anybody in Kino is going to be happy to see Discora races either. So it's a loose, loose situation. I don't even know why I'm bringing it up. I'm just realizing how fucked we are. <laughs> yeah. Um. But do we want to risk going and trying to sneak in and then seeing us and then we are surrounded or why would they be up on the trench instead of down there do you think they're monitoring people coming through or do you think they're maybe afraid of something down there I don't know maybe they know where your tears are that can find and are for me Okay. Um, I put this to the group. Do we assume they're good people, go up there and talk to them, explain to them the situation, or do we assume they're bad people and we try to sneak in? Um, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure we've already established that Kino people as a whole are fine. And the fact that there's a drow among them, I can actually speak with them then without having to use any resources. Well, there's only assuming, three of them. It's a small group, too. It's not like we can't probably hold our own if they do attack us. All right. But I do think we should try to approach diplomatically, then, if we can get uh, some of, information. Of course, of course. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to... I know with Kaithia it might be a little bit of a sore thing. I, I didn't mean to imply that I think that Kino people are bad people. I, it's more that if I had met a tabaxi out of the blue 10 years ago, I wouldn't have assumed it wasn't hostile because I would have assumed anything from Kino would have been bad. It's, And I assume it's probably similar here. There's a lot of misconceptions across both sides. Yeah. Well, let's try to be the change we want to see. So you're going to go talk to them? How do we get up there? <laughs> it's about 90 feet up. It's just a steep walk, right? Or is it uh, is it completely steep? It's really steep. Okay. Like, it's not quite 90 degrees, but... I can just walk up there if you want me to walk up there and say hi. You motherfucker. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Oh, right. You can also just speak every fucking language, Raul. Right. Raul. <laughs> Raul's the perfect diplomat. If he just runs off walls, and like, yo! <laughs> hi. <laughs> uh, I mean... If you run up there with some rope, the rest of us can kind of like uh, use the rope to brace ourselves to get up there. Yeah, and if they attack me, I'll just jump off. What are they going to yeah. do, follow me? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there are ways to get down a cliff very easily, so possibly, but at least we'll be here if they do. I'll be fine. They'll have to catch me, and I'm pretty fast. Hmm. Understatement, Roll. Understatement. <laughs> <laughs> Get some rope out, tie right. it together, and hand it to Raul. So, Raul going up alone? Yeah, he's going to not just, like, hop up and tie a rope. You know, he's going to timidly, like, you know, peek over the corner and slowly kind of... Uh, Take a stealth up. roll for me, please. Yeah. Kind of suss these people out as he goes. Oh, Wow. 29. <laughs> Damn. See if one of them's an imposter, gotta. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you climb your way up. Let me check if they can. Okay. Uh, yeah, you manage to climb your way up, and they don't appear to be paying much attention to anything around them. They just seem to be talking and chatting. Um, some of the like one of them is caught up in a bedroll and they seem to be like resting um in the shade that they've built for them. Um but the others just seem to be cooking and just as it relaxing is not quite the right word, but you know, 
They're just doing camp things. Um, so you can very easily climb up very quietly if you want to create uh, a way to secure a rope and have everyone climb up. That is something that could be done. Okay. He's going to do that while they don't notice him. Mm-hmm. Yep. Totally fine. Um, in that case, can I have each of you please make stealth rolls? And then as soon as he gets it tied off, he'll start approaching. Yeah. Damn, boy. It's a good roll. I'm going to use my new focus. Okay. It just gives me advantage on stealth. Okay, that's fine. I'm, I'm borrowing some of Squash's knowledge of how to not be loud as fuck. Guess, uh, <laughs> guess who got a six? Because it was me. <laughs> <laughs> not even surprised. Why do we even try? <laughs> <laughs> because group stealth check, yo. I know, um, I know. So you managed to make it up quietly ish, uh, like a mixture of looking at the camp and all of you can, uh, that were up there now can see, a mixture of them like stirring things in the pot and they get into a rhythm like, okay, climb, 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 stop, climb, 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 stop. And it comes in like the former clanks. It's very, it's very slow. <laughs> Red light, green light. <laughs> but as a team, you managed to make Zoltana quiet enough in the correct moments to, to climb up. Um, you four are at the top um ahead of you you can see a very small camp they built enough shade and they've built like areas where they can sleep separately you can see that there is a fire which is currently cooking this kind of four-legged tailed creature um probably about you know the size of a raccoon or something it's not particularly big um but they are they're cooking it one of them uh tabaxi older male is clearly resting and sleeping um seems to be a little worn out but the uh, the drow lady and the um, tabaxi male are just sitting there and talking one, with one another. You can see that the drow lady is pretty well built um, and she has a long sword. Hmm. Ra makes a sound and is in mid-wave. So he like does a little sound to get their attention. And so he's waving at them. Uh, you see the drow lady kind of like jump up and she grabs immediately grabs the long sword and holds it defensively in front of um, the two tabaxi. Um, the one tabaxi that was sitting with her kind of like moves over to the second one that is kind of like lying down and resting. Um, but that's as far as they get before we can do anything else. Uh, she looks at you and she kind of like looks very confused and she says something. Um, oh, wait, you speak every language. Um, <laughs> she says, who, who the fuck are you? Um. We're here to go to the forge, I think. Um, are who are you? More of you? What? Yes. <laughs> How many more of you? A couple. What are you doing? Exactly. How many is a couple? I and don't want like to tell you. you. You will tell everyone and they will kill us. I might kill you right here, right now, if you're not whom I'm expecting. How many of you are there? More than enough. Four. You're outnumbered. Four. Four. She holds the sword like kind of a little bit less defensively. Um, and she says, All right. My name is Lathera. Who the fuck are you? I'm Raal. Nice to meet you. Raal Jacques, perhaps? Um, record scratch <laughs> can't save <laughs> <laughs> can't save <laughs> that's our own record scratch it's can't save <laughs> <laughs> damn it roll 20 oh my god no <laughs> well um uh, Raul, upon hearing his own name basically just passes out and the three of you see that um, Raul I need you to resolve a breath weapon attack against yourself please <sighs> <laughs> have I was I able How to hear her done this? hear her talking? Uh yeah, you can hear her talking, yeah. What language was she speaking? Fuck I rolled good. Uh she's speaking um Kino Common. <laughs> okay, so I wouldn't really Okay. No. I take eight damage, I think. Uh yeah. You have resistance, so what you rolled was a 16, so half of that would be eight. Um, she doesn't exactly put the sword down, but she does kind of like run across and kind of like grab Raoul, um, like uh, on the hoodie. <laughs> and she kind of like begins to drag him back to camp and you hear them. Uh, nobody else can speak Discora Common. Sorry, Kino Common. Not without spending side points, but... 
Fantastic. Uh, you hear her yelling something at the two tabaxi and they, like the one that is a little bit more mobile and the one that was laying in the bed, they both kind of begin to move and like help her drag Raoul back into the camp. Um, you see that they kind of put him on the bedroll and they seem to be tending and you see that the drow lady leaves the two tabaxi with Raoul and she takes a few steps uh, closer to like the edge where the three of you are currently kind of hiding, I guess. Um, and she just says something very loudly in common. Uh, in Kino Common, she kind of like lifts her hands as if she has no weapons, forgetting that she has a two-handed weapon in one hand. <laughs> she looks like she's trying to be peaceful, but forgets she has a has a sword in her hand. Um, Laughing's going to call out first in Elvish and then in Undercommon to see if she understands either, and just says, "Can we climb up? Is that all right?" You just hear nothing that makes sense back. Fuck. Drow that doesn't speak either. God damn it. <sighs> okay. Well, also, to be fair, Elvish um, would be 5,000 year different Elvish. That's fair. Like, two of them split off. They would speak very different languages now. All right. Laughing spends the five side points to use psychic speech. Okay. So I'm down to 47 side points. He activates the ability in his mind and then tries speaking again. Is this better? Can you understand me? Much better. Can we climb up, please? Who the fuck are you? You, you can climb up, but I might kick you back down. Is our friend still up Who there? Who are you? We're friends with the the dragonborn that was just... Yeah, I, I said his name and then he passed the fuck out. <laughs> you said his name? <laughs> Right. How did you know his name? Um, I'm waiting for him and a couple of his friends. How many of you are there? Four of us, if you include him. And you are... Laffian? Laffian. Laffian. Connolly? Or you're the other one? No. Well, that that other name is... Well... Is one of you a dwarf who's going to be a goddess? <laughs> Laffian like tries to like move himself to the <laughs> side and like points down at the dwarf. Clunk clunk clunk. Yo, that's me. <laughs> um, you s- you see this like really buff looking um drow looking over the edge, and she looks down and she sees the the three of you kind of like kind of mostly up, kind of not, and like you see her put the sword down and she reaches down to give you a hand and pulls you up. Okay, um, thank you. And then she like reaches down and grabs her sword and takes a few steps back. Uh, she's still pretty defensive of the of the camp. Um, so, Laffian, Squash, and Sultana, you're a goddess, right? I, you have no idea what she's saying. <laughs> sorry, they, they, they don't. Um, they don't understand. I I had to use a bit of uh, my own magic to. Uh, be able to speak. Right. Uh, I said that might be a problem. Right. Uh, hang on. Um, she draws a symbol in the ground. She draws three interlinking circles linked by a much larger circle. And she kind of like taps that and it's like, you'll recognize that, right? They said that you'd recognize this. Yes. How do you know of that? Oh, thank fuck. Um, and she kind of like puts the sword in a comfortable place and she's like, come and join us at the camp. Ugh. Boy, do we have a story to tell. Um, I have exactly one hour. <laughs> well, I'm not one for speaking fast. Uh, shit. I can do it again right. after, but uh, the less I have to do, the better. I understand. Uh, basically, we're meant to be here to kind of help you do whatever it is that you're supposed to be doing. No questions asked. Just help you work the forge. Oh. They said you'd have no idea what the fuck you're doing. Sounds about have right. No idea how to work the forge. Right. You don't exactly know what you're making yet. Nope. Now that one there, and she points at the tabaxi that up until this point had kind of been. This tabaxi is kind of the older one. Um, a lot of his fur has like, lots of streaks of grey and white in it. Um, they look clearly fairly old, and you can see that they have like lots of scars across their face and across their paws. Uh that one there knows the sort of things that you're supposed to be doing and 
us two decided we'd stay and protect him. So can't leave a no guy like that on his own here. So uh, one slight problem though. Uh, there's something down there you got to deal with as part of whatever thing you got to do. So I'm translating, yeah. by the way. I'm, I'm yeah, that's fine. Filling them in. There were these two little wee kits, and they told my friend over there that they had to be expecting you, but the little kits, they're, they're like a conduit for a god or gods, or I don't fucking know, but they were just stuck down there in the forge, so they're not there anymore, don't worry. Their mama came and saved them. So there's something down there in the forge that we have to deal with? <sighs> right, I. Any idea what it is? Uh, really big thing. Got like two heads, kind of weird looking arms that have no hands on them. Kind of squid-like, I guess. Uh, only dodgy looking bastard. Great. Oh no, V. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm, I'm out. I don't know if I've this. <laughs> I'm I just, think I Neil's... know what you're fucking describing, dude. Two heads. Right. Arms Two. with no hands. Uh-huh. Right. Kind of weird squid-looking things. Yeah, I know exactly what the fuck this thing is. Out of game, at least. Yeah, it's real big. And uh, it, it didn't exactly move in. It kind of appeared a few days ago. Well, a fair bit back, actually. Uh the two heads is what throws um, me off. We decided off. we didn't want to be down there anymore. So we came and decided we wait up here and keep an eye out for you. Said we couldn't miss you. Either you'd come to us or we'd stumble across you. Or you wouldn't come at all and we'd just be waiting here until the end of the world. So yay. I- I'm glad you made it anyway. Because, uh, yeah. Wonderful. Um, good to meet you then. Uh, we should probably get our friend awake. Right. He can actually right. translate, which would be a lot easier than me having to use any of my energy. So, uh. Fair point. Uh, also, it's going to get dark pretty soon. Uh, do you guys want to eat and rest and settle down for a bit? That would be very you go good. Do whatever you got to do. Well, my camp is your camp. That bloody lass that they turned up. Been waiting here for a couple of weeks. I'm getting pretty bloody bored. Anyway, how you doing? I'm Lathera. Uh, you probably saw me last over in your Kino story. So, hey, how you doing? They finally turned up, which is pretty great. I want to say thank you to Sachimoto and Benjamin, who've been hanging out, sending us messages and such like. They're uh, new patrons, keeping us uh, going in food, water and uh, power. So that's pretty good. Thank you very much, loves. Also want to say, if you want to go find some new pretty cool things, go check out the website, theluckydie.com. It's got pictures on there, stories telling about the cast and the crew, saying thank you to all the patrons, everybody's up on there. Uh, and also, if you're interested in it, apparently I ran this game called Iron Disulfide. The system and really bad notes on how to run that are currently up on the website if you want to surprise your players with it. There's also this mirrors thing that people were talking about apparently this group of people went through a mirror and there was a haunted house or something on the other side belonging to the deity of death doesn't sound like my cup of tea but probably worth ch- checking out if you just want a cool little self-contained mystery go right ahead it's all up there on the website you go ahead and enjoy um you're about to hear this this probably an ad thing that you probably heard of before dungeons and dragons they've been on here before in the reckless plays go ahead and go give that a listen if you got time and mostly i want to say thank you uh for hanging out with us and i'm gonna go and help them deal with whatever it is that they've got to deal with so i didn't expect there to be a goddess here all right then wish us luck well hello there 
I'm Russ Moore, your Dungeon Master from Dungeons and Dragons. We're a D&D 5th edition actual play podcast, and we're four friends who just love Dungeons and Dragons. Adventure, collaborative storytelling, laughing, and just hanging out with friends. Throughout Season 1, we play through the adventure module Rise of Tiamat from start to finish with some extra flavor thrown in the middle. Season 2 begins with new characters, new stories, and a whole lot more laughs. We're Dungeons and Dragons, and we hope you can join us every Wednesday for a new episode at dumbdragons.com and subscribe on your podcast app of choice. Until then, have a great week, and we'll talk soon.